today we're going to talk about the 13 things you need to know if you're thinking about living here in Duluth, Minnesota. So stay tuned, you don't want to miss anything. Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. I'm Cody Oakland, a real estate agent here in Duluth, Minnesota. If you're new here and interested in all things Duluth, be sure to hit the subscribe button. And if you guys could do me a huge favor, smash that like button, leave a comment, share this with a couple friends. I would really appreciate it. I'm getting a ton of questions about people moving to Duluth here. So if you're looking for any help uh, on buying a property or selling a home here, reach out anytime at the phone number or email on the screen below. I love helping everybody out. Now let's talk a little bit more about living here in Duluth. All right, we're gonna start today talking about Lake Superior. And everyone knows Lake Superior. And our area was really built around it for a number of reasons, but it does provide a lot of fresh water here uh, and a lot of scenery. So depending on you know the property you buy, you might even get a property that has a view of Lake Superior, even if it's a small one. Uh, but it does provide a lot of scenery for, you know, whether you're just driving around, hiking around, we've got different trails and roads built around it and different uh, places we do events around here and uh, like our canal park area that's down by Lake Superior where the lift bridge is so you can access the lake directly down there and there's restaurants and everything. So it's a really big part to living here. And a couple of really important pieces you need to know if you're thinking about living here are going to be how it affects the weather here and it really makes it unpredictable uh, for a couple of things um, because uh, it's really tough to be a weather person here so they might be predicting rain uh, but you might not even know until that day if it's even going to rain um, or how much it's going to rain because maybe it'll be a lot less than the storm they're predicting which could be really good news, but it just, it makes it hard to plan around sometimes uh, because of how the lake effect is here from Lake Superior. It's also one of the reasons we get more snow here than some other places around Minnesota. Um, so that will be part of it. And, you know, different parts of the area here will get, you know, less or more snow than other parts because of the lake effect. I'm not saying it's a huge difference, but you will see differences throughout the area in it, their proximity to the lake as well. And it's also one of the reasons we don't really get tornadoes here. It makes the news when we even get a funnel uh, because the how the lake effect changes tornadoes as well. So that's a really cool piece to living here. And some other aspects to the weather are gonna be, you know, it's definitely gonna be windier by the lake typically. Not every day, but that is part to uh, living by Lake Superior here. And we really do a lot of activities by the lake as well. So we do a lot, number of events like we were talking about uh, down in like the Bayfront area in Canal Park. You know, we've got Grandma's Marathon. That's one of the biggest marathons around anywhere. So a lot of people travel here for that. And, uh, you know, they, they finish down in the Canal Park area and, you know, there's different places where you can kayak, paddleboard on the, the lake and a lot of people will go fishing. We've got tours like the Vista Cruise. So you can really use the lake. It's not just for scenery. So that's one really important aspect to living here in Duluth, Minnesota. Now a few other items I want to discuss, uh, especially after just talking about Lake Superior here is a really unique piece uh, to living here is the area Park Point. So if you go down into our Canal Park area and cross the lift bridge, that whole area is Park Point. And it's supposed to be the longest freshwater sandbar in the world. And we have it right here in Duluth. So it's really cool. And here's kind of a little breakdown of Park Point. So we've got a road that goes all the way down to a small airport there and then there's a trail system that'll bring it down to the the point itself uh, it's not all maintained it's it's well maintained for a good chunk of it and then you kind of got to go walk across the sand for parts as well but uh, the part on the the main Lake Superior side is your sand beach side and there's actually property you can buy over there the prices are pretty high because of the limited availability and being on uh, Park Point on the sand beach and it's actually free public access across the whole 
sand beach part, which is very cool. You can directly go into Lake Superior and everything. And then uh, there's the bay side. Uh, there's no sand beach over there for the most part, but uh, you, you can, uh, there's property you can buy. So if you want something on the bay side of Lake Superior, there's gonna be some property there. And then in between that isn't gonna be on the lake as well. But uh, there's a number of different access points. The main area people go to park it's gonna be the Park Point Park. That's the biggest area to, for that. And then uh, there's a big field, some sand volleyball and the, the beach house. And uh, they will put lifeguards down there at certain hours during the summer. And that's kind of the main area. And then further down by the, uh, the airport is where people also park and utilize the beach there as well. So the further down you go, it gets a little quieter if you're looking for less people. But it's a very cool area uh, and it's right here in Duluth so it's awesome to use the lake on a nice day I mean heck people even surf down there <laughs> once in a while when we get some good wave action and uh, another piece to Duluth that you need to know about kind of built around Lake Superior is the lake walk and the lake walk is about eight miles long it really starts you could say it starts down on Bayfront and goes all the way to Brighton Beach. And a good chunk of it is gonna be along Lake Superior so you can access the lake or just the shoreline uh, or take in the scenery. So you'll see people using that all the time for biking and hiking around. It's really cool. You've got the different access points and parks along the way too. So a lot of people would like to start down in Bayfront or Canal Park and walk their way to like the Rose Garden or Leif Erikson Park and then uh, journey back and there's different points you can stop along the way. One of my favorite stops is actually the Portland Malt Shop. That's pretty cool. Good ice cream. And uh, you know they've got kind of a two paths along the lake walk there so they've got kind of the paved path and then more of your like boardwalk setup. So it's a little easier for walking or biking depending on what you want to do and then uh, the train goes along some of it as well so the train tours if you like seeing the trains and listening to the trains as they go for part of the year that'll be uh, pretty close to the lake walk as well and then uh, the other big piece you need to know uh, that's a staple of living here in Duluth and also provides a lot of the views you see of Lake Superior here is the Duluth Hill. And uh, it doesn't take up all of Duluth <laughs> like uh, you might read about or see, but it, there's uh, different parts. You've got the area above the Duluth Hill where a lot of our retail is like the Miller Hill Mall area where you have the mall, Target, different restaurants, Menards, Home Depot. Best Buy, all that stuff is gonna be mostly by the mall up above the hill. And we've got different uh, neighborhoods to purchase property above the hill as well. And then there's certainly neighborhoods that are gonna be uh, right on the side of the hill. And it really just depends. You might get a view like we were talking uh, of Lake Superior. You might get like a quick, you know, side view of the lake out of a one bedroom corner or a full-on view right out your living room window. It just kind of depends on the property and what we're looking for. And then there's a ton of area below the hill as well. So we'll just have to decide what works for you, what you're fine with. And a lot of people ask about driving on the hill and it's gonna have a couple of days really in winter. You know, when we're getting a snow snowstorm and We've got slippery conditions where the roads haven't been fully plowed or salted. So it's a little slipperier on, you know, the steeper parts of the hill. And the, the whole hill isn't completely steep. It just depends on where you're going because it's pretty steep by the area going downhill or downhill downtown. And then there's uh, less steep parts uh, off to the sides of the area. So there's ways around it as well. But that's, that's probably the main time to watch out is if we're getting a snowstorm and it's slippery conditions. It's usually best to kind of go around it for uh, those days. So it's not all winter long or anything, 
but it, it's those specific times you got to watch out but it is a great part to living here it's why we get some really cool uh hiking trails and everything so we're going to talk about that next now because of the duluth hill and the different trail systems and our access to a lot of outdoors here we have some really cool trails here and I, I want to talk real quick about the mountain biking because Duluth was ranked uh, the gold standard one of only about six places in the whole world by the International Mike Mountain Biking Association and they have one of the only trail systems that really connects a lot of the neighborhoods here and they're still finishing up some of the areas but it's going to be about a hundred miles long uh, of just mountain biking uh, for the whole trail system that connects everything and uh, that's just for right here in Duluth we've got a lot of area close by that you can bike as well but it's really cool to have here and there's different versions of the trail depending on or trail systems depending on you know how uh, extreme you want to get <laughs> and obviously you know with the Duluth Hill some of it's going to be uh, pretty hilly and rocky uh, but it just depends on really what kind of trail system you want to utilize and we have a ton of different normal parks you can visit um, they're not all super well maintained but we do have some really big ones here uh, that a lot of people like to visit especially like Hartley uh, Park that has some of the superior hiking trail that we'll talk about in just a second going through it you've got Hawk Ridge Lester Park you know close by you've also got Jay Cook State Park just outside of Duluth here or Gooseberry Falls not far out of Duluth uh, just past two harbors and uh, uh, like we were talking the Superior Hiking Trail is actually about 300 mile, miles long goes all the way up to Canada and we've got 43 miles of it right in Duluth with different trail routes you can take and there's also a lot more uh, trail system outside of Duluth so you don't have to travel far to continue using it so it just depends on what kind of route you want to take whether you're looking for just a short loop or you know something where you got to go for 15 miles and it's just one way and you maybe have to figure out a way to park a second car or something to get picked up or you want to camp there's tons of camping spots uh, so that's a very cool part to live in here and then we also have Spirit Mountain right here in town so especially in the winter you know if you want to do any you know snowboarding skiing uh, they even have a little area for you know tubing so it's a very cool they've even got places you can stay there as well but so you don't have to leave to do any of that any any of that stuff we've got a lot of cross-country skiing so if downhill is not your your thing we do have tons of trails for cross-country and uh, uh, we also have a number of resorts that aren't far outside of Duluth that are within two hours if you want to change up what uh, like ski resort you go to. But we do have a lot right here in Duluth, so you don't have to leave the area to do a lot of this outdoor activity. Another uh, really important piece to know about living here in Duluth, Minnesota that we have available to us is the DEC uh, Convention Center. And we do a lot there. We have a lot of big events there. Um, especially like just your standard home builder show here they do the wedding show there but we also have a lot of concerts and big acts that uh, actually make their way to Duluth we even have a lot of big comedians that uh, make their way here which is really cool but a couple of them this year even and so they do a lot down there we even have the Amsoil Arena that uh, a big uh, event here is Bulldog Hockey from uh, that's the hockey team for UMD here and uh, that's really fun to uh, go to so if you like any hockey that's a really fun spot and uh, the movie theaters down there and everything so we do have a main convention center which is a big deal for an area this size to have now we do need to talk about the seasons we have here uh, because a lot of Midwest places will have four seasons but Duluth really has four distinct seasons uh, because we we do get a real winter here so I really just want to break down the seasons a little bit because as one as we get uh, into spring 
you know, the leaves won't have been grown in quite yet. We start to get more rain as winter comes to an end. So as the rain comes down more and it melts more of the snow at the same time, you know, you're gonna see a lot more mud and puddles around. So it's a little dirtier that time of year. <laughs> so just keep that in mind as you're getting into spring, but the bugs aren't nearly out as much as they will be in summertime, which is great still. So you can get a lot done outside and adventure without any bugs for the most part in spring. And then, uh, you know, depending on the scenery, you can still see pretty far through all the trees as the, before the leaves come in. But as summertime hits, you know, that's a heavy outside at time for everybody here because the weather's warming up, even though there's bugs, you know, you, you, we certainly have mosquitoes and flies and everything out more, especially as you're out by the water or like hiking in the deep woods or something. But you know, we have bug spray for that as well. That certainly helps. But summertime is a big time here because of how warm it is, warms up all the water. So everyone's out in the lakes fishing, swimming, just uh, kayaking around so it's really cool and you know everything's full like you can see right now even though we're more in the fall time right now <laughs> but uh, it's really cool time to adventure around so we get a lot more visitors in summertime because of having Lake Superior and how nice it is and we do a lot more events during summertime and then as we get into fall time you know, there's uh, less bugs, the leaves start to change color, so it, get, it looks really cool around here, which I, I think even offers a, kind of a different experience uh, for outdoor activities just because of the scenery change. So even if you like hiking around and you want to do the same trail, it'll look totally different in the fall time. And uh, everyone's kind of preparing for winter. So uh, fall time, the weather can be a little unpredictable too. You know, we can get really warm days and uh, so it might even snow. But if it does snow, it usually goes away pretty quick in fall time. But as we get into kind of mid-November, that's when the snow will start to stick around and uh, the temperature will start to drop and stay low more consistently. And even though winter doesn't technically start until the end of December, it really begins kind of mid-November as we go on. But the uh, colder months you usually read about are gonna be January and February. So January is technically your coldest month out of the year for uh, average temperature. But February, odds are you're probably gonna get at least a couple weeks of the e extremely cold temperatures you read about uh, because of the wind chill. That's what really brings the temperature down and uh, the snow you're gonna get is really gonna vary. So, you know, we do get, because of our proximity to Lake Superior, extra snow here. So when you're buying a property, we do have to talk about, you know, uh, snow removal. So you might have a property where you can just shovel and that's more than enough. Uh, it's usually easy to at least, at least buy a little snow blower uh, to take care of uh, like the driveway and stuff. Uh, that'll really help save your back shoveling. <laughs> And if you're looking for a property out in the country, depending on the size of the driveway and stuff, we might even have to talk about plowing. So that's, that's a very real part here. And we do get some slight different versions of snow. So you might get the light and fluffy stuff, uh, depending on the time of year, if moisture mixes in, you know, you might get some really uh, wet and heavy snow. And then uh, the stuff uh, you really gotta watch for and stay on top of is if it's gonna be really cold right after you get the, uh, the, the kind of the wet moisture snow because you don't want it to freeze and turn into ice blocks. So once in a while you'll run into where the weather is gonna change on you like that. Um, so it's just good to stay on top of uh, maintaining uh, snow removal. Let's see here. And uh, winter just kind of depends. Um, on when it ends every year. So every year you're gonna have kind of a different winter with how much snow you get, uh, how cold it'll be, how many cold days you'll get, when it ends, you know, cause typically, you know, it's gonna end somewhere around like end of March to mid April, but you know, sometimes it'll even last until the end of April sometimes like we had last year. So uh, even though you're not getting, you know, the super cold temperatures still, 
mostly you're just getting snow for a little while <laughs> at that point still and then uh, eventually it'll finally end but uh, we do get four distinct seasons here that you really got to just prepare for because you know it also means probably having a bigger variety of clothes especially if you're coming from an area like California where the climate's uh, way more predictable for uh, the temperatures and everything like that so just keep that in mind as you're looking to live here you know something that's kind of unique to Duluth it's kind of the the hub of northern uh, Minnesota uh, especially given the size of it because we do have a lot here uh, for a, a smaller city and one of the unique aspects to living here is it's really not far from some of the other areas so if you're gonna have to do some stuff in like the Twin Cities or maybe you think at some point you might want to take like a weekend trip for different events in the Twin Cities as well it's only two to three hours away depending on you know where you're going there so it's really not far you know we do a, a number of day trips even down there uh, if we need to go for I like guess specific concert or something and then uh, sometimes uh, we'll take a trip up up the North Shore to like Lutzen or Grand Marais even and those are about two hours away and uh, so it's a nice little weekend getaway or even a day trip over there as well so you have a lot right in Duluth but you're also close to a lot more as well so as you start to use more of the area you know maybe you want to continue uh, adventuring out you don't have to go far to get to other lakes, other trail systems. There's a lot close by as well. Now, I also want to talk about the uh, type of property you can purchase here because we have quite a variety given um, the setup of our area here. And because we are a city, but we also have a lot of rural area around us and a lot of lakes and everything. So we'll have anything you're looking for, whether you want something right here in the city. You know, we have a ton of older property so if you love that older property character and everything we have a lot of options for you uh, if you're looking for a view of Lake Superior you know there's certainly gonna be some properties with that maybe you want water frontage uh, you know there's certainly less on Lake Superior but we have a lot of lakes around us that even have you know a number of year-round homes you can live on we have a lot of country property so if you want to live out in the country away from more and you want more land to utilize we certainly have a lot of that as well so uh, it really just depends on what your goals are for purchasing property here so we'll tackle that anytime you're looking uh, to make the move reach out and uh, I'll help you with that as well now the last two things I want to go over just real quick uh, because they are an important piece to living here and really unique to have it in, uh, for an area this size is one we do have uh, three colleges right here. Uh, two main universities and then one main kind of more two-year college here. So the, the, the two-year one is more uh, Lake Superior College. And then the two main universities are gonna be St. Scholastica and University of Minnesota Duluth. And they offer a ton of different programs. And so it really just depends on you know what you'd be looking for, what your kids might be looking for. But we have them right in Duluth. So it's very cool to have here for an area this size so you don't necessarily have to leave the area. We get a lot of people coming here for to be in the area and go to school. So it's uh, something worth checking out. And the other item is we actually have two main hospitals here that service a lot of the area and the uh, area outside of Duluth as well. And uh, we got St. Luke's and Essentia. Essentia is actually building a brand new building downtown, spending almost a billion dollars on that thing it looks it's looking really nice it's not finished yet but uh, so you don't always have to go to like a major city for uh, some uh, bigger services for medical services so it's if you need anything it's good to check their websites to make sure what they offer but uh, versus some of the smaller areas where they're very limited on their uh, medical service we actually have the two main hospitals right here in Duluth well, there you go. Those are the 13 things you need to know about living here in Duluth, Minnesota. If you like this video, hit the thumbs up button, leave a comment, share it with a friend, and be sure to subscribe to my channel. I post new videos about Duluth, Minnesota every week. And as always, if you're looking to buy or sell a home here in Duluth, Minnesota or the surrounding area, reach out anytime at the phone number or email on the screen below. I'd love to help you.